On Nationwide this evening, it's a gardening lover's paradise as we visit a new garden with a Japanese theme in County Waterford. And in Dublin, we meet the woman described as the undisputed queen of Irish gardening. Beside the village of Ranala, near the centre of Dublin, is an iconic garden that attracts garden lovers from all around the world. It is the work of Irish writer, broadcaster and lecturer Helen Dillon, who during the last four decades, with her knowledge and her passion for plants, has certainly upped the ante when it comes to Irish gardens. Today, we're dropping in for a special nationwide tour. And even at the front garden, I have to admit a severe dose of garden envy. Did your love of gardening begin? About three. It sounds so corny, but uh, I was staying at my great grandmother's and she had some hyacinths. And I went down the garden. I suppose I could only just walk and I could see these things and I just thought they were so amazing. And I couldn't understand why everybody was still in the house, but why weren't they out there looking at these things? Mm. And uh, that was just, it was the hyacinths that did it. Then I got my own garden when I was about eight at home. And my main thing I grew was polyanthus. I thought polyanthus were the best things in the world. It was just the most wonderful respite from life. It really was. Did you want to do gardening as a career when you left school? Well, I wrote to the um, head of, of amateur gardening. Amateur gardening was a very good paper in those days. And they said, I love gardening. Could I come and go and work there? And miraculously, they said yes. And I met wonderful people like Anthony Huxley, who was Julian Huxley's son and a man called A.G.L. Hellyer, who was a very, very, very well-known um, writer and gardener. And uh, I was set on the right track. Although I'm not professionally trained, I understood the, the system of how names had to be right, Latin had to be right, it all made sense. I learned an awful lot there, although I didn't sort of think I was. And it was while working at the magazine, she met her future husband, antiques dealer Val Dillon. She was a sweet, lovely, little innocent girl. I didn't know how keen she was on gardening. She lived on a balcony in London, and um, you couldn't get onto the balcony for pots. But actually, she was, a, she was more interested in antiques, really, and young men at the time. And I can remember she was very innocent, really. She arrived in my shop one day. She was wearing a wonderful coat made of little bits of fur and she hopped from one foot to the other and she wouldn't come in she was too shy but she's changed completely since then you coaxed her to come and live in dublin well she was from scotland and uh, didn't want to live in scotland we were both a bit jaded of all these dinners and things in london so we decided to come back to ireland i am irish people don't think i am because i was at school in england which is a terrible mistake and um, she agreed that this was the place to come to. We thought to ourselves, should we go to Cornwall? Should we go to Scotland? And we thought, well, why don't we just come to Ireland? It wasn't long before Helen began to gain recognition in Ireland as a keen and imaginative gardener. Part of this is covered in the winter with glass to keep the extra damp off the plants, which they hate, particularly around the collars. And up there is the more ordinary things, the obricious and things which will take uh, just ordinary garden soil with extra drainage put in. Then she became a household name with RTE's Garden Heaven. If you wanted somebody to identify a piece of music for you, you'd hum the tune. And that theme would keep recurring time and time again during the piece. The same happens in the garden. Here is a buglia. Over there is a buglia. They're slightly different, variations on a theme. One of them is buglia nanho blue, and the other one is buglia black knight. Helen, looking out the window there, I feel as if I'm looking at a painting that you've been working on for, what, more than 40 years you've been in this house? Yeah, but it's a painting that's always annoying me. 
I'm always thinking, what can I do about that? What can I do about that? It doesn't annoy me in June, but by August, I'm itching to change something. It's always something's got too big or something's not growing. And you have the constant judgment of Solomon. Do I take out the big plant and all the little ones have space? Or do I take back the little ones and let the big one have its head? So it's, it's impossible. And that's perhaps the attraction. Helen, it really is an oasis of calm and beauty so close to the city of Dublin. It's all to do with the aspect, really. We, we chose this house because of the aspect. Because in this climate, with the sun so low, and to grow this amount of stuff, you need the very best light. Helen, I feel as if I'm walking along a catwalk here. This is a very dramatic, central theme to your garden. Well, you see, we used to have a lawn. And then we sort of made the big borders at the side. Mm -hmm. And then I kept, I, of course, buying more and more and yet more plants. More plants. So we wanted this very serene feeling in the middle that mm -hmm. I couldn't put plants in that would be very, very plain and very simple, and which means they could go on being very hectic at the sides. Uh -huh. And change and change of mind have always been prominent features for Helen and her garden. And the lawn is a focal point because, of course, you can see it from the house. I don't think I'll change the lawn. I don't think I will. I've already changed it three times. In what way? Made it smaller, put up the, the mowing edge up the side, which is fairly new, took out a fountain. I don't think I'll change it, but I might. So you're not averse to change then? You're a woman who embraces I change. I love change. Because as I just quote a cliche, but it's my own personal cliche. Uh, I want to be a creator and not a curator. Mm. I don't want to be wiping its bottom for the rest of my life, <laughs> so to speak, with the garden. I want to uh, enjoy myself. Helen, I have to congratulate you on the colour of your garden. It's so uplifting. I presume it lasts right through the year, does it? It doesn't last in the winter, no. Everything's very flat in the winter. But I use a lot of what I call mobile colour, which is effectively cheating. Oh. Like, for example, you hadn't noticed yet, but these, these elstromarias are growing in pots. So I if, see! So if yes. ever I need a little bit of extra colour, I just dash up with a pot and plonk it down or bring it up in the trolley. And I've also got a lot of plants waiting in the wings down there, which are things like agapanthus for agapanthus and dahlias for later in the summer. What I like is that you, you know, you can be quite contrasting with the colours. You've yellow there and you've lilac that there. That is the whole point. My theme at the moment is called a box of smarters. Oh, lovely. Yes. So we have orange, because orange is so luminous. That's really a very good idea, Helen, isn't it? Because where you spot a gap, you take your pot and you plonk it in and there's the colour restored. Yes, I mean, if you've got somebody coming to lunch and it's looking a bit peaky, you rush up with a clump of agapanthus, plonk, and then they say, oh, lovely. Do you know what's remarkable, Helen? There'd be so many people surprised that you have your vegetable patch right in among these beautiful flowers. Well, I love veg. I adore veg, particularly love cabbages. My husband says he won't those. eat them that big. He says he oh, won't eat them. No. Mm -hmm. So particularly, do you like coriander? I love coriander. You see, we've got coriander growing here, and you can grow it all winter, and it's hardy, and then you put it more in the spring, and you can eat it every day of your life. I never knew you, you could grow small, it outdoors. Just buy a pot in a shop, pull it into eight bits, and shove it in the ground in the sun, and mm. water regularly. So it's not just about the flowers with you then, Helen? It's about everything. It's about the light, the sky, the noise the birds make, um, the feel of the soil, uh, the colours, mm -hmm. uh, the little gusts of warm wind like the moment. I mean, it's a daft day today. It's so wonderful. It's uh, the rain when we need it. It's, it's wonderfully therapeutic. It's the most magical uh, way to get through life. I don't know how people manage in the hustle and bustle and rustle that everything is without gardening. What I'm doing here, Mary, is I'm making a, a fennel avenue. Oh, wow. Because a fennel is wonderfully tactile, and I feel sort of my ankles feel just tickly even just walking 
past it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that it's going to work, but so far I think it's rather nice. And you'll have the lovely scent. And I love the contrast of this soft fluffiness and things like the prickly roses. And just I can just think about the prickles and the softness together. Helen, I feel as if I'm coming into a different room here. Well, I suppose it's, it's classic and it's not particularly original, but that's really the way to divide up a garden. And did, did you notice that wonderful thing there? That is stunning. That's a lady slipper orchid from America. Yes, it looks very intricate. It's very intricate from the bee's point of view because in order to pollinate it, he has to actually get into the pouch and wriggle around, which spreads the pollen around. And is that difficult to grow? It, it, it's pretty difficult to grow. And it doesn't like disturbance and you mustn't plant it too deep. It's uh, as rare as hen's teeth, actually. It's considered the most beautiful orchid of all. It's like Cinderella, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm. And it's, this is the right day for it, too. There's about one right day in the year, <laughs> this is it. What I like about you, Helen, is that you're prepared to take chances. So many of us are cautious and feel, no, that won't grow there, so we don't try it. Don't and sometimes try. it works. I mean, I often think the only thing that really matters is where you plant a plant. And so you look it up in a book, and it might say plant it in the sun, mm -hmm. or it might say plant it in the shade, but quite frankly, if you shut your eyes and threw it out of the window, <laughs> it might well be better. But you have to try and work out the best place. The, the, mm -hmm. the essence of gardening is what's the best place to plant a plant. Mm. We've seen your favourite plant. Mm. Do you have a favourite spot in the garden? Well, I rather like that bit through there. That uh, it's a sort oh, of yes, right. it's meant to be a little bit sort of magic woody, and I want to do something that's the exact opposite of a British herbaceous border. Ooh, what does that say about you, Helen Dillon? Well, thereby hangs many a tale. <laughs> this has a, a sylvan setting feel to it. Well, one of the things is we have very bad honey fungus in this garden and people don't realise, particularly people in Dublin back gardens, they don't realise that because they took all the apple trees out and the pear trees out and the plum trees out, particularly when the boom came and they thought, well, why, why grow this stuff when it's all coming in from Timbuktu? And... Um, a lot of old gardens have it, which means woody, woody plants, any woody plant suddenly dies, usually in the summer. And I thought, well, I don't want to collect magnolias and see them all dying, so I'll have to plant something expendable. So sorry to mention it in their hearing, that's why I did aurelias. It's like a canopy. I want a green canopy. I want something because in a small back garden, it's difficult to walk under a canopy. Mm -hmm. I don't want a big tree, I want a canopy. Mm -hmm. This flower here behind us is magnificent. Well, that blue is just dazzling. Gardeners adore that blue. Mm. Makes me go weak at the knees. What is it? It's a Mechanopsis from the Himalayas. A poppy family from the Himalayas. Wow. And it doesn't really like Dublin because it's too warm here. It likes cool, cool, damp, lime-free, wind-free places. Like the Himalayas? <laughs> the Himalayas, yeah. Not <laughs> it's like, doing not pretty like, well here, Not though. like glorious run of that one, see. <laughs> You must get lovely positive reaction from visitors to the garden. Mostly they're terribly nice, very nice. And um, it's charming of them to come, really, because they don't get anything else here. There's no swings and roundabouts, there's no cafes, <laughs> there's no Christmas trees, there's no presents for auntie, it's mm. just garden. Helen, over the years, you've put so much love and passion and hard work into this garden. And I'm wondering now, what's going to be the legacy in well, years to come? The legacy really is uh, I suppose it'd be wonderful if the government bought it, but it's, it's too small. And uh, a great friend of mine, who was a wonderful, wonderful gardener, he always said, when the garden d gardener dies, the garden doors close forever. So, I mean, the whole thing's very transient. And perhaps that's... In, the other thing I could do, and a friend of mine who's a landscape architect wants me to do this, if I felt strong enough, I would decide to absolutely leave it as it is and just watch it myself and see which plants took over what plants and how nature readapted to the same site. And that could be very, very interesting. It might break one's heart, but it might be rather magic. I like it the way it is. So do I. Helen Dillon's beautiful garden here in Ranelagh will be open to the public next Sunday afternoon and then seven afternoons a week during July and August. And it really is well worth a visit here. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will be visiting a Waterford garden that has very strong Japanese influences. We'll talk to you again in a couple of minutes.
You're welcome back to Nationwide. When the sun shines and the weather is good, gardens all around the country look their best. County Waterford is lucky to have a large number of formal gardens that are open to the public and form part of the county's garden trail. The latest addition to that list opens officially this weekend. It's in a lovely location overlooking Tremor Bay and Damien Tiernan has the story. Ireland has a new garden, the latest addition to our magnificent collection of urban and rural gardens around the country. This one overlooking beautiful Tremor. But this garden is unique, not just in Ireland but maybe Europe, as it's the only garden dedicated to the iconic Irish-Japanese literary figure Patrick Lafcadio O'Hearn, who spent his boyhood summers in Tremor. This was the proposed garden a full year ago, when the sod was turned at a ceremony full of promise and hope. I suppose the vision first came when I was here with the great grandson of Lafcadio O'Hearn, and they were so moved by the memories of Lafcadio and Tremor, I thought it was such a pity we had nothing here to show it. And while we were in the garden, we came here because they wanted a quiet place to film, and I thought, well, why don't we make it a permanent memory to him? The concept and inspiration for the project arose from a visit to Tremor in September 2012 from Professor Kuzumi Baum, great-grandson of Lafcadio O'Hearn and his wife Kuzumi. Lafcadio, named after a Greek island, was born in 1850 and is very famous in Japan. Dignitaries were excited about the project. I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, this uh, uh, project is indeed uh, very, very important. Uh, Lafcadio Han uh, is, as you know, uh, I mean, in Japan, uh, uh, the most famous uh, Irish man. And uh, this uh, project will uh, uh, give us, I mean, give uh, uh, visitors a very good chance to know, uh, to learn about uh, uh, the, the connection, his connection with uh, Japan. <laughs> Twelve thousand uh, Japanese visitors uh, approximately come to Ireland every year, um, and which is quite small, and it's something that should. And and you've got to remember that Japan is a very wealthy country. Uh, it's the third uh, largest economy in the world, um, and there are very many people who would, if they had an excuse. Uh, to come to a country like Ireland, if they knew more about it, would uh, and, and would visit uh, Lafcadio Hurl Trail, Dublin, uh, here in, in, in Tremor and also in Kong. Our cameraman Neil Stenehy recorded the development of the beautiful garden. Last August, the heavy lifting equipment moved in, the diggers and the excavators. The garden was being designed to reflect on Mirror Hearn's extraordinary journey through life, from west to east, from his lonely early years in Ireland to the honour and fame he achieved in his later life in Japan, as Agnes and Sonomi explained. I was quite shocked to learn that he is not known at all in Ireland, so I think this project will be a good opportunity for Irish people to understand him and to know him better and, and also people would appreciate Japanese culture as well. This area here is probably the most important area in the garden. It's central to the whole story. It, it depicts the time when Hearn went to Japan and met his wife, whose name was Koizumi, and he took her name. And Koizumi means a little spring or fountain, and that's what we have here in front of us. And if you look behind me at that central rock, that's the paternal rock, the guardian rock of the garden. And you could imagine it is Hearn, and the rock to the side is the family nestling under the arms of the paternal rock. The work continued. Winter sunshine illuminating and guiding. Craftsmen and women from the highly respected voluntary organisation Tremor Development Trust, working in partnership with Waterford Council. Some of the work was delicate, intricate, all of it carefully done. Japanese gardening advisors such as Kasumi, 
were brought in to fully authenticate the design. For example, he helped build a traditional Japanese stone basin, which is used for washing hands before a Japanese tea ceremony. Martin Curran, project manager, worked closely with Kasumi, and of course, he learned some Japanese as well. What are you doing here today? Uh, uh, I, may, I am making a uh, chozubachi, a uh, stone bowl. In Japan, how important is a stone bowl in, uh, in a garden? It, uh, washing uh, hand. Mm. hand. Uh, clean, clean up hand uh, before uh, drinking tea. Mm. What do you think of the garden? Is it good? Yes, good. Uh, good. Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, How good is it to have Kazuki here, Martin? It's brilliant, uh, especially just on the finer details of it, like with the Chosabachi, the water basin bowl, Japanese fencing, um, where we'll be positioning lanterns, things like that. It's great just to nail down those finer details of it. Speak a little bit of Japanese to him there. Oh, jeez. Mm. Um, How are you this morning? Uh, uh, Kazuki-san, uh, ohayou gozaimasu. Ah, ohayou gozaimasu. <laughs> hai, hai. Kyou wa ii tenki desu ne. Kyou wa tenki desu ne. Good fine ne. Yes. <laughs> That's it, Damien. Good fine. In the middle of the winter, Agnes was happy at how the project was developing. What sort of practical help has Kazuki brought to this project so far? Oh, really great help. Uh, he arrived just a few days ago and already he's come in and given us hints on how to get a better sound from the water in the stream, which was flowing beautifully, but we had rounded pebbles on the base of it. And he explained if we had sharp pebbles, as in a mountain stream, you get a better sound of the torrent. And it's quite a difference. You should put your microphone to it and get the sound of it later. And as spring turned to summer, the flowers emerged to a bright new dawn. In May, the rising temperatures brought more, an illumination of colour, scents and surprises. The garden is now complete, the transformation a credit to all involved. And something which Lefcadio himself would no doubt be proud of. A hint of the Orient, a little bit of Japanese gardening in County Waterford. And if you'd like to find out more about that garden in Tremor, where you can go to the website address that's on your screens now. And of course, there are lots of gardens in and around Waterford that are well worth a visit and all around the country. I have had a wonderful time here today in Helen Dillon's garden in Dublin. On next Friday's Nationwide, the County Cork event, which has brought city and country folk together for the last hundred years or more. We're at the Cork Show to see everything from vintage tractors to food produce in Cork and to meet the Cork people at this wonderful summer event. Nevin Maguire meets the team responsible for feeding over 300 guests in Bunratty Castle with the final episode of Home Chef tonight at 8.30. But next on One, The Taste of Success.